Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. Befitting the red planet's bloody color, the Romans named it after their god of war. In truth, the Romans copied the ancient Greeks, who also named the planet after their god of war, Ares. Other civilizations also typically gave the planet names based on its color, for example, the Egyptians named it Herdisher, meaning the red one, while ancient Chinese astronomers dubbed it the fire star. The bright rust color Mars is known for is due to iron-rich minerals in its regolith, the loose dust and rock covering its surface. The soil of Earth is a kind of regolith, too, albeit one loaded with all organic content. According to NASA, the iron minerals oxidize, or rust, causing the soil to look red. Polar caps climate orbital characteristics size, composition and structure The moons of Mars research and exploration lost missions Human missions to come Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. Befitting the red planet's bloody color, the Romans named it after their god of war. In truth, the Romans copied the ancient Greeks who also named the planet after their god of war, Ares. Advertisement Other civilizations also typically gave the planet names based on its color, for example, the Egyptians named it Herdisher, meaning the red one, while ancient Chinese astronomers dubbed it the fire star. Click here for more space.com videos. Physical characteristics The bright rust color Mars is known for is due to iron-rich minerals in its regolith, the loose dust and rock covering its surface. The soil of Earth is a kind of regolith, too, albeit one loaded with all organic content. According to NASA, the iron minerals oxidize, or rust, causing the soil to look red. The planet's cold, thin atmosphere means liquid water likely cannot exist on the Martian surface for any appreciable length of time. Features called recurring slope linea e may have spurts of briny water flowing on the surface, but this evidence is disputed. Some scientists argue the hydrogen spotted from orbit in this region may instead indicate briny salts. This means that although this desert planet is just half the diameter of Earth, it has the same amount of dry land. The red planet is home to both the highest mountain and the deepest, longest valley in the solar system. Olympus Mons is roughly 17 miles, 27 kilometers, high, about three times as tall as Mount Everest, while the Vales Marineris system of valleys, named after the Mariner 9 probe that discovered it in 1971, reaches as deep as 6 miles, 10 kilometers, and runs east-west for roughly 2,500 miles. 4,000 kilometers, about one-fifth of the distance around Mars and close to the width of Australia. Scientists think the Vales Marineris formed mostly by rifting of the crust as it got stretched. Individual canyons within the system are as much as 60 miles, 100 kilometers, wide. The canyons merge in the central part of the Vales Marineris in a region as much as 370 miles, 600 kilometers, wide large channels emerging from the ends of some canyons and layered sediments within suggest that the canyons might once have been filled with liquid water. Mars also has the largest volcanoes in the solar system, Olympus Mons being one of them. The massive volcano, which is about 370 miles, 600 kilometers, in diameter, is wide enough to cover the state of New Mexico. Olympus Mons is a shield volcano, with slopes that rise gradually like those of Hawaiian volcanoes, and was created by eruptions of lava that flowed for long distances before solidifying. Mars also has many other kinds of volcanic landforms, from small, steep-sided cones to enormous plains coated in hardened lava. Some minor eruptions might still occur on the planet today. Channels valleys and gullies are found all over Mars, and suggest that liquid water might have flowed across the planet's surface in recent times. Some channels can be 60 miles, 100 kilometers, wide and 1,200 miles, 2,000 kilometers, long. Water may still lie in cracks and pores in underground rock. A study by scientists in 2018 suggested that salty water below the Martian surface could hold a considerable amount of oxygen, which could support microbial life. However, the amount of oxygen depends on temperature and pressure, 
temperature changes on Mars from time to time as the tilt of its rotation axis shifts. Many regions of Mars are flat, low-lying plains. The lowest of the northern plains are among the flattest, smoothest places in the solar system, potentially created by water that once flowed across the Martian surface. The northern hemisphere mostly lies at a lower elevation than the southern hemisphere, suggesting the crust may be thinner in the north than in the south. This difference between the north and south might be due to a very large impact shortly after the birth of Mars. The number of craters on Mars varies dramatically from place to place, depending on how old the surface is. Much of the surface of the southern hemisphere is extremely old, and so has many craters, including the planet's largest, 1,400 mile wide, 2,300 kilometers, Hellas Planitia, while that of northern hemisphere is younger and so has fewer craters. Some volcanoes also have just a few craters, which suggests they erupted recently, with the resulting lava covering up any old craters. Some craters have unusual-looking deposits of debris around them resembling solidified mudflows, potentially indicating that the impactor hit underground water or ice. In 2018, the European Space Agency's Mars Express spacecraft detected what could be a slurry of water and grains underneath icy planimostral. Some reports describe it as a lake, but it's unclear how much regolith is inside the water. This body of water is said to be about 12.4 miles, 20 kilometers, across. Its underground location is reminiscent of similar underground lakes in Antarctica, which have been found to host microbes. Late in the year, Mars Express also spied a huge, icy zone in the red planet's Korolev crater. Vast deposits of what appear to be finely layered stacks of water ice and dust extend from the poles to latitudes of about 80 degrees in both Martian hemispheres. These were probably deposited by the atmosphere over long spans of time. On top of much of these layered deposits in both hemispheres are caps of water ice that remain frozen year-round. Additional seasonal caps of frost appear in the wintertime. These are made of solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice, which has condensed from carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere. Mars think air is about 95% carbon dioxide by volume, in the deepest part of the winter. This frost can extend from the poles to latitudes as low as 45 degrees, or halfway to the equator. The dry ice layer appears to have a fluffy texture, like freshly fallen snow, according to a report in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets. Mars is much colder than Earth, in large part due to its greater distance from the Sun. The average temperature is about minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 60 degrees Celsius although it can vary from minus 195 F, minus 125 C, near the poles during the winter to as much as 70 F, 20 C, at midday near the equator. Mars lies farther from the Sun than Earth does, so the red planet has a longer year, 687 days compared to 365 for our home world. The two planets have similar day lengths, however, it takes about 24 hours and 40 minutes for Mars to complete one rotation around its axis, versus 24 hours for Earth. The axis of Mars, like Earth's, is tilted in relation to the Sun. This means that like Earth, the amount of sunlight falling on certain parts of the red planet can vary widely during the year, giving Mars seasons. However, the seasons that Mars experiences are more extreme than Earth's because the red planet's elliptical, oval-shaped orbit around the Sun is more elongated than that of any of the other major planets. When Mars is closest to the Sun, its southern hemisphere is tilted toward our star, giving the planet a short, warm summer, while the northern hemisphere experiences a short, cold winter. When Mars is farthest from the Sun, the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, giving it a long, mild summer, while the southern hemisphere experiences a long, cold winter, 